today i'll talk about equipment or instrument maintenance and management i'll take up general aspects of equipment maintenance for a clinical laboratory this is equipment life cycle uh, there is a need for equipment so we assess the need for equipment if we require equipment we procure the equipment and then we use and maintain the equipment after using it for uh, let us say 10 years uh, and if equipment is beyond repair then we dispose of the equipment after its useful life so this is the equipment life cycle these are the general points initially procure the equipment we may either buy the equipment or we acquire it on a rental basis we use it for 5 to 10 years usually 10 years and we uh, calibrate the equipment periodically and we clean and inspect the equipment on daily basis weekly basis monthly basis or in some other frequency there are uh, various types of service contracts initially the equipment is under warranty so uh, any repair work is done by the service provider free of cost or if any part is defective it is replaced free of cost by the manufacturer the second type of service contract is uh, annual maintenance contract it is the maintenance contract it does not cover the parts which are damaged so if any part is damaged or defective the part is replaced and the service provider will charge you for that part it will not charge for the service but it will charge you for the part replaced in a comprehensive maintenance contract or cmc the parts are replaced free of cost so service and parts are replaced free of cost and these amc and cmc are usually done on an annual basis then uh, in usage uh, we include function checks of the equipment which i'll describe you then at the end of useful life the equipment is either disposed or it is uh, given back to the firm in a in the form of buy back offer the firm uh, take up the old instrument and replace it with the new instrument with a discount uh, on price so purchasing so purchasing can be of two types as i told you outright purchase or on the basis of rental reagent rental basis in outright purchase you pay for the equipment and the equipment is then your property you use the equipment and you dispose the equipment it is your property whereas in contrast if you acquire the equipment on a rental basis it is usually known as reagent rental basis in a clinical laboratory then uh, the equipment is the property of the firm the service is provided by the firm and you use the equipment and you pay only for the use for example you pay for the reagent and you do not pay for the equipment then what are the steps of purchasing uh, the first step is pre bid meeting it is important if the equipment is uh, uh, high end equipment in pre bid meeting uh, the you you uh, you meet with the uh, prospective supplier Uh, various manufacturer and you uh, you decide on the basis of your need what should be the specifications of your equipment then you may either uh, buy the equipment by a limited tender or single bid method or a two bid method in two bid method uh, there are two bids one is uh, for uh, one is a technical bid the other is a financial bid then there is maintenance contract Uh, which may be either warranty, CMC, or AMC, as I told you in previous slide. Then uh, mostly equipments have electric circuit, and uh, usually there are three uh, connections to the equipment. One is live wire. Uh, the live wire and uh, is is connected to the fuse. Uh, then uh, there is neutral wire, and there is a ground connection. So there are these three connections to the equipment. and the these are connected to the electric circuit of the equipment
then uh, some of the points regarding general maintenance of the equipment equipment should be uh, regularly inspected it should be cleaned and maintained a good housekeeping a good housekeeping uh, housekeeping or cleanliness will uh, help uh, the equipment uh, and uh, we, will result in long life of the equipment and uh, importantly do not use the instrument for purpose other than that for which it is designed then uh, uh, precautions with respect to electric hazards uh, the equipment should be switched off before uh, removing the plug and uh, importantly the equipment work usually uh, in a voltage of about 110 to 230 volts in India, it is 230 volts, and in some of the countries, it is 110 volts, and both these voltages are lethal voltages. Uh, and uh, it is recommended that you use a stabilizer uh, before the equipment. As I told you, there are fuses which are attached to the live wire. So, uh, whenever there is need for replacement of fuses, uh, then uh, the equipment should be uh, switched off from the main uh, switch and uh, instrument should be unplugged and the replacement should be of correct specifications. Then about mechanical aspects, uh, uh, the door gasket should be checked uh, so that uh, door fits properly, the door is closed properly, then uh, certain equipment have moving parts, they should be uh, dust free, we can use grease or machine oil uh, for the moving parts, the instruments with moving parts, the examples are centrifuges and microtome in a clinical laboratory, then if there are uh, unusual noises or vibrations uh, from the equipment, then equipment should be inspected by the service engineer. Then about cleaning of equipment, uh, before cleaning equipment should be disconnected from the main supply and uh, no liquid uh, should enter in contact with any of the electric connections. You should wear protective uh, gloves and uh, excessive uh, amount of solvent should not be used. Equipment can be cleaned with the help of warm water and a cloth. Uh, if required uh, to disinfect the equipment, we can use hypochlorite but phenol and hypochlorite, they are irritant to the skin mucous membrane. Moreover, they corrode the metallic parts. So these should be avoided as far as possible. And we should not use abrasive compounds or metal components to clean the equipment. For example, if there is accumulation of paraffin wax in our uh, uh, embedding machine or uh, tissue processor, they should be cleaned uh, with a uh, they should not be cleaned with metal uh, 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 spatula or something like that. Then these, this is a list of equipment which are uh, commonly used in a clinical laboratory. And uh, I'll talk about functional checks and calibration of the equipment. So this is uh, the list of equipment and these are the function checks. First one is microbiology incubator. Uh, it works on a particular temperature. So uh, uh, the temperature check. Uh, or thermostat is very important uh, check, uh, functional check in a microbiology incubator. Then comes laboratory refrigerator. It also uh, works uh, in a particular uh, low temperature, usually uh, 2 to 8 degree temperature or uh, sub-zero temperature. So thermostat is important and temperature maintenance uh, is important. Then uh, uh, centrifuges. They work uh, for a particular speed and for a particular time. And some of the centrifuges, uh, especially the refrigerated centrifuges for molecular techniques for DNA, RNA work, uh, they work uh, at sub-zero temperature. So uh, the function check related to speed, time, and temperature is important for centrifuges. Then micro pipettes, the volume should be calibrated and every six months, the micro pipette needs calibration. Grossing station, uh, the pipes should be checked that they are not blocked and the filter uh, should be cleaned. Then uh, tissue processing equipment, uh, it works at a particular temperature. So, uh, some of the stations of the 
tissue processor and quality of reagents need to be checked tissue embedding station uh, they, they, there is a, uh, a reservoir for paraffin which is kept at a particular temperature so temperature check is required and there is a cold plate uh, so temperature check is also required for the cold plate then microtome section thickness and speed of microtome the uh, speed of movement of block of the microtome need to be checked uh, cytospin is similar to centrifuges they are used in a cytopathology laboratory uh, so similar to centrifuge the function check related to speed and time is required hematology analysis is calibrated for all the tests for example for hemoglobin for uh, total leukocyte count for rbc count for platelet count so they are checked uh, uh, for all the parameters of complete blood count or cbc biochemistry analyzers usually uh, they maintain a particular temperature usually 37 degree centigrade and uh, they have filters uh, for measuring optical density of the cuvet so these things uh, need uh, 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 a checking and calibration so this is about functional check and calibration of equipments Uh, then finally at the end of equipment life cycle the equipment needs to be condemned and uh, after, it is it can be condemned only after obtaining beyond repair certificate from service engineer service engineer give you a certificate that equipment is now beyond repair you cannot use it then only we condemn the equipment equipment can be either disposed or it can be uh, sold back to the uh, parent firm so it, uh, after, uh, before disposing the equipment the equipment should be disinfected because in a clinical laboratory equipment uh, may be contaminated with clinical material so it should be disinfected before disposal and uh, it can be either uh, uh, returned to the parent firm in the form of buyback offer and the firm install new equipment uh, after giving you a discount for the new equipment so this was end of the lecture